Greetings, this um, video is recordings of uh, very high electromagnetic readings which uh, was uh, taken over a couple of days. Uh, this is the first uh, electronic uh, electromagnetic meter that I could that I could find that I could afford which I brought which is uh, really for testing walls but um, that's all I had and I got a positive uh, signal and um, one day it's very I realized it was coming in very high burst but intermittently so um, I, archi I recorded this and archived it and uh, I've left it by the wayside really because it, it, it's tied into which I, I believe is where it came from was to do about a home which is my home but it's also my parents home and I, uh, I'm going to give a brief explanation of how that all came about over several years. Uh, my mother and father were council tenants, so faithful council tenants all their married life. Um, they both worked. And we moved to a bigger house when, when my brother and I were growing. And uh, we moved to this location. And uh, had the opportunity to, my parents had the opportunity to buy their council house and uh, but then um, the council had this um, and people behind the council or in, encouraging the council, I cannot tell you, had this project in, on, on the burner for a long time and I believe the motive was money and um, Parents uh, took them all. Uh, the council deemed, got a surveyor to. They couldn't knock the houses down because, uh, so they had to lie and cheat. So they got a surveyor to to lie. They're old um, Dutch prefab houses. They're like oh, the old houses were like um, World War Two, thick concrete. They uh, clipped together and they had uh, um, steel reinforced rods um, set into the concrete. And there was a very, they would last for years and years and years and years because they were so sturdy. And they're a bit rough around the edges, but there was nothing structurally wrong with them. And there was a case in a very small batch of these houses all over the country and in other, in, in other parts of the world. And... Uh, that when they set the concrete of the the walls and the, the built as because they're big large blocks that look like a leg a big um, Lego house that they they sort of like join together and then they they're like permanent fixtures on a concrete foundation they're concrete walls uh, steel frame windows and um, some of the batches had the the steel that was set into the concrete were uh, damp and they they would split over time and it and expand in the concrete and break the concrete and um, this was used to over t uh, to justify condemning the housing estate which they got permission um, and they that was just at the time our parents were. <laughs> seeking to get a mortgage I, um, and so we did we saw um, kind of because we'd lived on the estate we, we knew all the machinations before how they how, how planners slip things under the table and uh, so we had our eye on what their intentions were and they put a survey out if the, I think there were 74 uh, 74 homes roughly on on the the council estate that we lived and they were an old um, MOD workers houses and uh, then the, the council took them over and I think in the 60s or the 70s and uh, they proposed to the tenants to have a choice do they want the houses refurbished with like double glazing and uh, 
modern radiators because they were all back burners with uh, open fire with uh, back boiler and or or gas fires or whatever and uh, they gave the residents a choice to have either have a new home or the old home refurbished uh, refurbished so a survey went round and the results were correlated and, and it come back unanimous or almost anonymous, uh, anonymously that uh, people wanted uh, um, brand new houses but when when people in the community started talking to one another and the local shops because it was quite a quite a close community. It was discovered that, that there wasn't very many people who chose to have their homes, re, um, to have a new home because they were such lo lovely gardens. It was built on an old, uh, on old orchards, had big gardens, big front garden, big back garden, and they're very large houses and um, quite open and big rooms. And uh, so it started to realize, oh, these are lying. And the excuse that they condemned them was this, um, or oh, they had concrete cancer, they called it. So, um, and because we were deciding to uh, buy the house, and because uh, my mum and dad were paying rent, they both retired. So, Directly I we wall. decided to um, get a chartered surveyor to survey our house, which that which we paid for, and they said there's absolutely nothing wrong with these houses. So we started to smell the rat, getting a bit more smellier. And the local banks wouldn't mortgage because of what the council had done. They condemned them. So we found a way around that with, with our report and got a, a, a loan like because of, of the price of the house. Because my mum had dabbled with council tenants for so long, the, there was such a percentage of the price. It, I, and I was working and uh, I, I could help out and um, the uh, the price of the house was very cheap and it was um, a mortgage would have been you know pennies pounds a week and because and my mum and dad were tired I thought it'd be nice that they would rather than spending all that rent the mortgage repayments would be half the price so they would save money in their old age and so we uh, contested it, brought the house, and they didn't like it. They absolutely didn't like it. And so we decided to stay. And they come round trying to. They kept working on my mum, offering her to go and buy a, you know, go and choose your, any house you like. And then my mum did put the proposal for, and then they turned around and denied it that they ever said that. And then they kept pressuring us to uh, sell the house, and they'd work on my mum and dad, and they'd send. Every week, this went on for years because the plan was about five years. It was like about five years' notice, and they put the they, they kept claiming that they put the plans up at the council office. But when, every time, and because we wanted to know, well, we're not going anywhere now, and we wanted to know, well, what's their intention? Because we're semi-detached, and our neighbours w weren't homeowners, so they would have been forced out of the house. So we was wondering, well, what's going to happen to our that house because they're, they're going to knock that down and they wouldn't tell us what their plans were and we kept going up to the council office I took my dad up to the council office to find out what their plans were and of course they kept saying oh we've taken the plans off the table we're making amends and we put them back and we tried several times to find out well what are their intentions to do with our, our house but they kept um, you know were they going to knock it down saw it and uh, so we could we were being you know strung out and then we started um then they started trying to work and convince my mum and dad to accept it and saying oh it'd be good for your son and la 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 and so, but i i went to the paper to c contest it and give a testimony and so that we'll give a witness and say we're not moving you know we were, and they come into our home and there was a what 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 it what, I'd done some research and discovered that the it was a pro, um, a private housing association, and they were registered as a charity, and and then that's how they got going. But I'd done some digging, and I found from another borough and a councillor who was on on a committee of this housing association, which the, this housing association, which was called Sentinel Housing 
were once caught for fraudulent behaviour and, and then there was two associations joined, like two sister companies joined and they got caught. One got prosecuted and this Sentinel housing re, re, uh, re-morphed from the old name into Sentinel and, and a councillor had wrote a full report on the, the machination. And I discovered that they uh, they register as a charity to get charity status. They have loads of city in fact, uh, th- these were city of London investment bankers or some sort. And they set, got charity status and they would loan the money to a company and get that company to have employees who would, um, which were all, which was also part of the team who um, design the houses so they're probably all in on it and um, I, I'd done some research and dis- I couldn't find I thought oh these are masons or something and, uh, and I, I'd done some research and found I couldn't find any association to Freemasonry but both of the the two um, managers of the company not the chari- not the uh, shareholders the Sentinel housing operatives that would the charity would loan the money to them and then they would pay the the shareholders back with interest and that's how they would make a profit out of the charity status and then after a few years they'd lose the star- charity status and no one would be the wiser and this count and, and what they would do is they'd have um, they'd involve the public in the community so there'd be a, a, a committee and two thirds of the committee were made up of sentinel housing and the shareholders and the other one third was um, appointed to a public representative on on the housing estate and this councillor stood up to them and 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 said well no matter what's put on the table you it's two to one because you're playing out that you're one you're two separate companies but you're actually getting two thirds of the votes and nothing was ever being passed through and this councillor from another say the same county but a different area I called them out and I discovered a report on it and 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 so that that confirmed our suspicions and we contested it I went to the paper and and just shared what I said and um, then the then all the trouble started and all the you know they're trying to work my mum and dad over and they, they would keep coming up with these new ideas and every Friday after we said absolutely not, we're not moving, they would try every Friday, they'd post a letter through the door and then you couldn't contact them um, to complain until Monday morning. So every Friday they'd chuck this new proposal through the door and, we, and so every weekend we're like really agitated and wound up by it because we'd already told them absolutely not. And um, they come into our home and said uh, what started it one of the uh, managers, his name was uh, Val Bagnall, and the other one was uh, Mr. Paul Richards. Now, Paul Richards was the, the guy who designed it. Now, my my discernment was he was um, a nice man, and he wasn't really perhaps aware of what was going on. But the other guy was a bit more, sh- a bit more of a wolf, and he said, uh, "Round our, we, uh, my mum and dad invited them in. I personally wouldn't have, and um, I was there." And I was sitting at the table, and he said, "We said we're not moving." And they was trying to convince us to change our mind. It's all oh, it'll be all in your son. Think of your son. I said, "Well, you know, <laughs> we are. We've already made this decision, and you know." And I and I said to my parents outright that you know, take no notice of them. I, I said I'd rather I'd rather you stayed here, and if anything happened, I, I'd acquire this house. I'd much rather this house than be in the pocket of these people and he uh, one of them piped out you will be moving whether you like it or not and of course that got myself up on my feet and I told them to get out of the house and also my mum was like uh, reacted you know on your bike and uh, but rather crudely and told them to where to go and so all then they'd keep sending us letters to try and change our mind, to change our mind. And then about a few years after that, they were we, we were trying to find out what they wouldn't keep, they wouldn't inform us of what their intentions were. They kept changing the plans, 
but the plans were never at the council offices like they said so we knew they're lying and playing games and they would work on my parents work on my parents every weekend and every every, every monday they they would be told you know absolutely not stop sending us these letters but it, it never it never come to anything uh, so I'm not going to cover all the detail in in this brief um, brief video, but um, this went on for some time, and eventually we were the only ones in in the estate on a building site, and then we started getting all this abuse from builders, and the demolition crew, and um, the local council were supposed to be our ab um, to advocate and put a security guard on, but. Um, we were just getting uh, aggravation and persecution and and we we're the only um, house left and uh, we only found out what their intentions were about a week before and uh, they had they had um, different contracts I had a, a chartered surveyor to make sure that things were done properly and we found out at the last hour that they were were, they were going to saw the other house in half and render up the the remaining half of our home, so we'd be a detached property in in in, in on this estate, and they didn't want that. It would have been like a blotch to their their project. So they were all out to get us off, and they succeeded, which was a, it was evil the way they done it, and. Um, and against my will, and they'd done a switcheroo on my parents. My parents were so worn down that I f they worked on my mum and convinced her. She was just like, oh. you know, they, they, they worked on her while my dad was unaware of it and I was unaware of it. And they would, because we lived in a building site, my mum got quite friendly with uh, some of the workers, and I reckon they worked on her. My mum was very vulnerable. And, uh, so is my dad. So uh, after a while, they they they, they, might, they somehow convinced my mum. But I and they they changed it. They they were starting to think. Well, perhaps it'd be best if we moved. And uh, they didn't. They didn't. Um, they while it was while my parents were like deliberating about it. I expressed I I wanted nothing to do with it. And I'd, I'd um, helped my mum and dad attain insurance for the mortgage because they, a a mor they couldn't get a high street bank mortgage because mortgage they'd been condemned. But with our evidence, we could get a loan, which I had to insure. And I was working and I agreed to insure it. And I, I wasn't a homeowner. I was just a, a lodger. And uh, so on the original house, my mum and dad were, you know, I'd done it for my mum, solely for my mum and dad. So they didn't have to go through being moved around by these people and then put in, you know, not having a choice where they'd like to live. And so I agreed to insure their mortgage or their loan that if anything happened, it, I, I, I could pay it off. But anyway, we paid. They paid it off eventually. Anyway, so it wasn't a problem. And then they worked over my mum. Uh, on the day that it, that that the house was demolished, the 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 the, the, the company L A Moore were the contractors to do the demolishing, and they they were like, this was an organised criminal conspiracy and gang, and um, they were supposed. Uh, we were on the. We we're on this. Uh, it's a three-phase program, so it it took a few years to build. So for a few years, we're the only we were this lone house on a, a muddy landscape, and um, we ha there was pe the council was supposed to protect her, uh, that they couldn't start work until a certain time, but every morning that was ignored, and they'd they'd come in really early and they'd start up all their machinery, then going off go off for uh, an hour just just to wind us up um one ne right next door to our home was this they're building the big block of flats and while they was building them they were because there's so much stirring up against us that everyone was persecuting us and cheering us and jeering at us and they and one guy uh, they were doing the roof of the uh, flats uh, three-story flats 
um, I think they're private flats. Some are private flats, some are council houses, and some are for key workers. And they they were launching missiles and um, at my mum as she walked past the garden and chanting. So it was really it was some really wicked behaviour. And then they, of course they'd spread rumours and stir things even with our neighbours and uh, it, you know drop just drop dirty rumours. So we were getting it left, right, and centre from all these different areas. Um, and. Uh, you know, it's just really awful. And and there was a guy who threw a a, a hard rubber ball at, at my mother, and uh, it nearly hit her. And if it would have hit her, it would have killed her because it was one of those solid, hard, not like a rubber ball, but a, a, it was almost like a cricket ball. And he threw it really fast, and it missed my mum. Hit, and I heard it. And then they were firing rivets and, and all sorts, and this just went on all the time. So it was just grief after grief after grief, and all my all our complaints were just being ignored. We we're getting no representation, and the council all had a f their fingers in the pie, and they were supposed to uh, represent us and uh, protect us, but they just winked. They just they they, they were supposed to come round to our house and make sure they're doing what they were doing, but they didn't. The representatives went to the went to the uh, site hut and they'd all come out the site hut laughing and jeering. So we knew that it was all a load of rubbish. Anyway, this um, the, the, the contractors that were abusing my mum uh, had a car accident. This is awful. And they um, tipped there's a minibus bringing the workers to and fro from work and they tipped the car that it was a the the van tipped over along the dual carriageway and the sparks set light to the petrol tank and the uh it, it burst into flames inside and uh most of the people got out but um the guy who was uh through that ball uh burnt to death and um that was a horrible thing to witness, and, uh, and if that doesn't put the fear of the Lord in you, I, I don't know what would. And that was dreadful. So there's all this ugliness and machination against us. And eventually, they talked my mum into doing it, and I said, and I gave my, um, I said, right, if you want to do that, I'm not going to stop you, but I, I, you know, I don't want anything to do with it. And so my mum agreed, and then they, for my mum and dad to accept the house, they set up a, they pressured them in to site, give our property over before the new property was finished. And I could smell a rat, and uh, they set up and, you know, they put my mum, oh, you better get down, you've got to send this, otherwise it'll all fall through, and you've got to go and sign, your, sign the property, your property over to us before your house is finished. And I, and I just said, look, don't don't do it, because uh, you, you know you're gonna you're jumping into a pit, and then they're not gonna they're not they're, they'll probably get revenge on you. I and mean, that's exactly what happened. It was just like more persecution, uh, criminals. They, there was criminals um, encouraging the local youth and stirring them up against us, and all sorts going on after that. But what they did, they said, uh, you got to sign a solicitor's agreement, and um, and and then give your property up before your new one's finished. And I I, get, I spoke to my mum and dad, and I said, look, I don't want anything to do with this, but I can't stop you doing it. It's your home. So uh, that was our, you know, that was a, a wedge in our in our family. But because it was my mum and dad's house, I can't force them. I, in hindsight, I should have just dragged my feet and 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 not do it. But what I didn't appreciate was that they they set a device and told uh, i was i was working a uh, night shifts in a care home and i i was at home and I, i'd just woken up in the morning i come downstairs and and they were in there all jeering at me like laughing and this is after going to the paper and fighting them and beating them i'd even uh sue uh got a case to sue them because they on the house next door they took all the roof tiles off before at the weekend so when the rain came, it would all the all the plaster 
would uh, collapse and they stacked all the roof tiles on the on on the plaster of the roofs so when it rained and got soggy all these cut tiles kept crashing down but it let all the rain into their house and it flooded under into our home it was like a gush of water and come under the wall under the skirting so <laughs> i had to get rally and get them to apologize make up and I wasn't going to go to law, I, I couldn't go to law with them, the, I was just outnumbered, they had government support, local council support, I, I knew that we weren't going to get anywhere. But I made them come into our home, apologise and pay for the damage. And I got that done, but down the road that they tricked my mum and dad into uh, signing it. And I woke up one morning, this is towards the end, and I, I saw this Val Bagnall and Paul Richards, the one who told us we would be moving, sitting round the table with my mum. And they chimed, they, they, they groomed my mum and taken her around the house and convinced her it's the best thing that they could do. So they'd worked on her. My dad's so passive, he just he would have just done what my mum said and gone along with what you know what kept her happy. So I, I gave my, um, you know, I said, look, I, I don't want nothing to do with this. I, heartfelt conversation with my dad I said dad don't I really don't think you should do this and I, I but if you do I'm not going to do it and I said that I'm in such a state at the moment after going through all that and taking the chalice for them and fighting them off my mum had turned around and changed the goalposts and my dad was following and I just thought oh I've had enough but what what they proposed was um the uh my mum and dad had accepted the house and I woke up and they, they'd already discussed the and agreed and I just thought, oh, I threw my hands up in the air and went along with it. So they said, oh, to, for it to be successful, you've got to sign over your property before our other one's finished. And um, I gave my petition and on the day of this solicitors, we had to... Now the solicitor was retiring that day, so I knew it was just a wrap, but I was so worn out. My mum had just had cancer and was recovering from cancer. And they, they signed, I thought, well, I'll just sign it. But I wasn't at the meeting or the discussion of the, the, the arrangements. So I didn't really read, I, I, you know, you know what solicitors like small print. And even at the solicitors, it was, uh, you know, explained that it would nothing would change it would be a swap for a swap and 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 the circumstances be the same i wouldn't be a homeowner and i just my mum and dad signed and i just put my signature on it i you know gullibly i thought my mum and dad knew what was going on and um they pressured us uh so that there was a signature but and once it was done, it was done. It, it was their, our home was their home, and we had to wait till the new one was finished while we remained in our own house, still getting all the uh, abuses. After all the abuses, they stopped abusing us then, obviously, but um, the abuse continued when my mum and dad moved in. And I had nowhere to live at the time, so I was staying with them, and all this persecution started. And eventually, I just I had to get I had to get out. I couldn't live with my parents. And I, I made I, I made myself homeless, and I and I sought to get uh, my council flat, which I did. Uh, after some fighting and uh, petitioning, but it turned out that I was now a homeowner, and I couldn't figure out. Well, I'm not a homeowner. My dad's a homeowner, but what, how they uh, arranged it is that they'd um, put my dad as the homeowner, my mum as the homeowner, and me as a homeowner. But while while my dad's alive, he's the executive of the home. And then it, when anything happened to my dad, then my mum would be the homeowner. And if anything happened to my mum, then I'd become the homeowner. But lawfully, I am a homeowner. So I couldn't get any council property. And so I had to go back home. And I could, it was just, my mum was uh, sick. And I couldn't, in a sin cycle, and I, I couldn't, and being a Christian, I just couldn't live in, in, in that environment. But I didn't realise that I was yoked to this housing association, and, and this is what I believe all this target when the targeting followed. And bearing in mind, uh, having loads of uh, V2K, Voice to Skull, I, I just left the Mormon church. 
I think I was still at the Mormon church. I didn't never, never went to the Mormon church, but I was, uh, I hadn't uh, taken my name off the membership. I, I just hadn't been going for many years. I'd, I'd, I'd left it, but not really officially. And uh, the Lord delivered me from that because I was deceived by them. And uh, so I had all the persecution from that, and then this followed. So when when I realised that, I thought, well, I'm lawfully stuck here. I can't move away. And and what I, I wanted to... I didn't have the strength, but I wanted to fight these people in court and, and, and bring the crime to light. But I was just out of my depth and, and worn down. And with all my trauma and difficulty and going going all through what I'd been, I, I just threw the towel in, I just put all the burden on the Lord and said, Heavenly Father, I can't deal with this, you know, help me get out of this, this pitfall. And, but the persecution continued, uh, and it's continuing today, so this is what I, where I suppose, I'm suspecting that the, that this targeting come from. And so I don't know if it was the shareholders or if it's Sentinel or someone's over the shoulder on their behalf who's paid to have me targeted or have upset one in one of the shareholders and they've got connections. But all all this targeted started after the uh, ga um, gaslighting of people and the uh, abuse of the local youth and uh, throwing the ball over the fence about a hundred times what consistently. The police wouldn't do anything. The police 101 would turn a blind eye. Uh, Sentinel Housing were liars. They denied getting letters, and and it it was just uh, wicked. And so I, I I just resolved myself to patiently wait. And so I found these uh, videos today in in an archive, and I thought, well, I'm gonna on the back of the uh, ringing 101, 111, and 999, <laughs> seeking help and for other crimes. And to get some med urgent medical attention, which thank God I'm, I, I'm, I've improved, and um, and my temperature's gone down, but I, I was really sick, and I needed hospital, and my mum was bumped off in hospital, so I wanted to make sure the police were there, you know, and that they were aware of any any danger, but I just got nowhere, and again I was shut down. So uh, this is my uh, hypothesis that this this. Uh, targeting followed from from these people so I, I my mum had a brain tumour so I don't know how long this radio electronic radio thing was flying through our house I had absolutely no knowledge of this sort of technology at the time and my mum developed a brain tumour we were becoming you know it's it there's so many faults in the houses they cheated in passing off the picking list they would they just made it up as they went along and walked all over us and I you know and I put myself in a position to allow them to do that because my parents have, have put me in that jeopardy they wouldn't acknowledge their they would they couldn't understand what my uh, problem was and I, I just resigned the fact that my parents were just you know retired you know they're dead dead in their sin but anyway, thank God it led, eventually led to my mum's salvation when she had a brain tumour. It sort of made her realise, I think. And uh, Anyway, this is where I, I, I suspect it comes from. So I don't know how long it was going on, but I caught these... I was getting... I, I caught these bursts of energy and from coming from different directions. So this is what I've recorded. And this went on for years. This has been going on for a few years after the um, human physical... Uh, gaslighting and persecution then this followed the electronic harassment and I, I, I suspect it's like um, neighbourhood uh, covert neighbourhood behaviour because they get to choose who they put in each house you see and um, and it's private council and key workers so I, I was getting these signals from all directions I was being cut and there's these other devices against me, so that's what this video is about. And um, just to call out these people, uh, just to publicly, you know, make it known of uh, these criminals, and that I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I've not, um, 
I'm not sold out to them. It, it, I was deceived into following my parents and then realised that I was a, a homeowner. And so I'm stuck here because I can't, you know, I can't sell a house without my dad's say so. And my dad just can't comprehend that fact. And I, I just, trying to explain it to him, he, he just like looks at me blankly. He's just dis dissociated. And it was my mum who'd done all the driving and she's passed away, so my dad's like bewildered by it all. And so I'm left with this, uh, uh, my dad, and he's always been like that, it's not old age and dementia, he's just always been like that. And that's another another concern of mine that, that uh, you know, they're gonna catch my dad out and, uh, you know, pull, out, pull the wool over his eye, so, um, I pray that that doesn't happen because that would hurt me, you see, and that would bring it all up again. So I caught all this um, radiation, and uh, and I and when my mum was diagnosed with a brain tumour, our doctor said, oh, oh, there's been a spate of brain tumours recently. And I thought, well, and then I discovered these signals, and then I was feeling these signals, but I didn't quite know what it was and then when I'd done some research, it took me about a few years to research all this and I found out about targeted individuals, MK Ultra, and it opened so many doors I, I thought right I'm going to measure this and record it and I brought, brought some in instrumentation and I caught these strong signals, so that's what this video is about and uh, I suspect it came from those people and I'd done some research and found, found out that these two wives of this uh, two um, managers of the housing association that they they would been visiting these uh, Masonic uh, garden parties. So I couldn't associate them to Freemasonry, but their wives were. So I thought they're Masons and they're probably uh, part of a, a coven, and this is a conspiracy and a, um, a fraudulent crime. So I'm just documenting the fact and uh, sharing this with the public that people are aware of these sorts of machinations and um, they're still guilty of their crimes I've not I've not I've not let it go I've just not been able to deal with it so I'm just going to share this in the name of Jesus Christ Amen